There's two uh, ways that we started on this project. The first thing was because of the brutalist architecture of this building here at the Barbican, I thought I knew there was brutalist architecture in Morocco and Agadir was one of the big cities that had this architecture built after the earthquake of 1960 when the city was rebuilt. And then there was this book that I recommended uh, you to read, the 1967 novel Agadir, and there was no English translation. So we thought that would be a good thing to start with. Translate the book to English, or excerpts of the book, a big chunk of it. And uh, I think this is the two feet we stood on to start this project. The curve and its face is like, I think, the ruins of an empty hotel. Uh, after the earthquake, that's why you would have this red carpet. The scratch drawings on the wall are, could be drawings that kid made. And it's also, yes, the backdrop for the actors from Guildhall uh, Drama School across the street from here who we work with. We worked with eight actors who took uh, characters from the book. The book is a, a bureaucrat sent to do a report on the city and who doesn't do what the commission asks him to do, he comes back with a poem novel. And there's very different characters who have conversations on how, where, how to um, pick up your life after this disaster and how to go on and what kind of city to build and where and for whom. And all these questions we thought were uh, quite accurately had an interesting echo in today's conversations. So the text, in the text, and in the book, and in the play, and in our characters running around in this space and talking about the text, you have all these different uh, issues and debates. It's an earthquake, but it's also all other forms of disasters. There seems to be this kind of thread of collage throughout the show. You're isolating the architecture of Agadir, kind of charting out it out through the space, but also the collages themselves that act as this kind of central focus point. And the film itself, you're splicing and re-editing footage in this very surreal kind of Dadaist way. Can you talk a bit more about that? I had an important concern. I had an ethical concern about finding the right form to talk about um, this form of catastrophe. These are stories of dispossession and dislocation, so I thought the working with material that was real, uh, not producing anything, or producing something from material, and that's how the collage came apart. They were also about an evocation of the domestic life that was completely exploded. People were safely in their rooms, in their bedrooms. It was 1140 on February 29th, 1960. So people were in the safe, safest environment possible, your home, and that's when uh, their whole life fell apart, when one third of the city was wiped out um, after this 1960 earthquake. So the collages are avant-garde activity, but it was also a feminine, a female activity. For the film collage, it's a bit different because I also didn't want to touch the material too much, but I did completely transform it. Uh, but we used most of the sound to create a new form of sound in the same way the letrists, poets, would work only with consonants or the dadas of Haul Osman would work with, um, uh, with vowels. And by using the sounds and the voices, they lose their voice. They're, the only real way to find an appropriate language was to reinvent it through the voices uh, inside the film. So sometimes you just have an eye that stays open a bit longer. Any mention of the earthquake has been taken off the film. And so you have these very matter of fact stories of people talking about uh, what they did, if they had a premonition, falling asleep after finding your bed full of gravel, but then falling asleep again. Those scenes are surrealist scenes in themselves. So that's what I did, working with the material itself and recreating sounds, voices, and even animal sounds from the different voices in the film. Yeah, it's like you're finding a new language, both a visual and a kind of sonic expressive one to deal with or to kind of treat this theme of separation, loss and trauma, which is so inexpressible with our everyday language. So you're finding kind of new vocabularies to express those moments. And at the same time, we worked with a sound that was playful. So you have something that's strange, 
but also very accurate when you think we're in London and having children play and laugh and make strange onomatope sounds like and it, people lost their language so they describe by making sounds but also that's what children do as they play and we know that a playground and ruins of a city is an appropriate way to play and then the history of London and other European cities after the war many vacant lots and ruins of building were sites for play so I think this is also what you can feel in this space you have the mad um, poet who wrote this text the mad poet bureaucrat the child the dadas of all playing together in what we call at the end of the last piece is called the danse macabre so you have these figures that are uh, companions sorts of companions in this um, strange dance <laughs>